Turn to your neighbor and ask him, did you get it? Did you catch it? Did you catch it? See, you got to catch the anointing. Oh, yeah, you got to catch it. Whew. That's why you have to lift your both hands up. See, one hand just don't catch it. Both hands catch it. Yeah. Glory. This is the night the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Ah. <sighs> What a refreshing. Boy, did my wife need this. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is our strength. And in his presence is fullness of joy. We should be drunk all the time. We should be... Filled with the Spirit of God all the time. You know, there's so much talk about Spirit-filled individual and so forth and walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit. And you know, walking in the Spirit is essential. The, the Bible commands us to walk in the Spirit. Amen? And, and one of the things I want to talk about is walking in the Spirit. Because this is not some kind of granola thing. Walking in the Spirit is not about goosebumps. Amen. Walking, in, you know, people can pray in tongues and still not walk in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit is a total different arena because walking in the Spirit means you're walking in a heavenly presence. Does everybody get it? You're walking no longer in the presence of the atmosphere of this world. You're walking in the heavenly presence, and there is a force field around you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and nothing can get through it, only if you let it. See, walking in the Spirit is totally different than what people think sometimes. But first you must be filled with the Spirit. Because you can't walk in the Spirit without being filled with the Spirit. Things change. One of the beautiful things about walking in the Spirit is you become so sensitive. So, and there are so many things that are clarity. It's, it's like seeing and magnifying through a magnifying glass. You see things. You sense things. You are so sensitive when you are walking in the Spirit. It doesn't mean that you're easily moved. In fact, walking in the Spirit means you can't be moved. And it doesn't mean that you're, you're so sensitive to seeing demons or whatever. What you're sensitive of what God is saying. What He's communicating. Because see, walking in the Spirit is a connection where you're one with the Spirit. You're allowing the divine nature and the Holy Spirit with your Spirit to become united in one. And you sense a force fear. There's a presence that is around you. That you know no weapon formed against you can prosper. You know that he who's in you is greater than he is in the world. And there's a place where you hunger and thirst for more. of. You are waiting for a release of a command from the Lord. And you don't move until you hear, until you know. And when he says go, you just go. There's a desire that you want to grow. There's a desire that you want to be more like Jesus. And in walking in the Spirit is walking in the love of God. It's not walking in the love of the world. It's not walking in anything else. It is the pure love of God Almighty where there is forgiveness and compassion. You and me, the old man, is bound. When you are walking in the Spirit, he's got a rag in his mouth. He's blinded, he's muted, and he's crucified. 
He has no place when you walk in the Spirit. He can't convince you. He can't even release or run emotion to you. You have dominion over everything. Everything. This is walking in the Spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Oh, glory. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Thank you. <sighs> Let's speak this together. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by what? All men. This can only be done if you're walking in the Spirit. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart. And we have such trust through Christ toward God that not that we are sufficient of ourselves or to think of anything of being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. <clears throat> Listen, ministers of the new covenant is walking in the spirit. It's not walking in the flesh or walking in the letter. It's not about how much knowledge you have. It's about how much presence you have. who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives, gives, gives life. The Spirit gives life. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. So the new covenant is requested and required to fulfill the arena where you and I are walking in the spirit. If we are not walking in the spirit, we are not fulfilling the new covenant. Is everybody okay? The new covenant is the ministry of the Spirit. It is the breath of God. It is the presence of God. It is the Holy Spirit. That's why it's required. Jesus told them in Acts 1, do not leave until you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. And many people left. Jesus didn't do anything until the Spirit came upon him. He was expressing an example of the new covenant. The new covenant is being, walking in the spirit. Does everybody get this? If you're, not if you're not fulfilling the new covenant, it's because you're not walking in the spirit. It is to be filled with the spirit of God. When you are filled with the spirit of God and walking in the spirit, you are seeing what he sees. You are sensitive to his unction, his voice, and his call, and his leading. That's where the word says that those who are led by the Spirit are known as sons and daughters of God. Because you can't be led by the Spirit unless you are filled in the Spirit and you are walking in the Spirit. So now there is a life in the Spirit. This is not a granola thing. What you see more is Jesus than anything else. Does everybody understand it? You see more of Jesus than anything else. And you have compassion on individuals. 
wherever you go. You can be walking in the Spirit no matter what. Amen? No matter where you are, no matter where you're going, no matter what's going on. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care what's what. Does everybody get it? But I don't think you can get too sick walking in the Spirit. Because walking in the Spirit destroys all sickness. Does everybody get it? Ezekiel 36. Hallelujah. He wouldn't want us to melt. Ezekiel 36 and verse 24. Remember he just talked about that the epistle is written in our hearts not on tablets of stone but tablets of flesh meaning your heart that's been changed from stone to pliable. Verse 24, what is his promise? He says, for I will take you from among the nations. Everyone's come from a nation. Gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. Then I'll sprinkle clean water in you and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all of your idols. That's when you repent and get washed by the blood of Christ. I will give you a new heart and I'll put a new spirit within you. That's born again. And I'll take the heart of stone out of your, your flesh and give you a heart. In other words, a flesh or after him. And I'll put my spirit in you. That's the Holy Spirit. I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. In other words, you will have the power because you are now walking in the spirit. You have a desire to obey. You have a desire to follow. And you will keep my judgments and do them. You will keep his commands. There is a closeness. There is a oneness in the spirit. As you are walking in the spirit and this force field is around you, it's you and Jesus. It's you and Jesus. All carried by the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. Now look at what happens. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I'll be your God. I will deliver you from all your uncleanness, and I'll call for the grain and multiply it, and bring no famine on you. Why? Because there is prosperity walking in the Spirit. And I'll multiply the fruit of your trees and increase your fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. In other words, you will never lack. He chose you. He said, I will call you. I've taken you out from the nation. In other words, he chose you. You didn't choose him. Took you out of the traditions of the world. He took all of us out. He chose us, pulled us out of the traditions of the, of the world, traditions of worldly men. He cleansed us from our idols and sins that are standing between us and God. He began to remove those things because there are things that separate us from the Lord and he begins to remove them so he can get close to us. And he gave you a new spirit, a new heart, as his offspring. Then he put his Holy Spirit in us, the third person of the Trinity, his breath, his presence, his power, and his truth. To do what? To overcome the world's evil influences and constantly reconnect us to his presence, his word, his power, truth. One of the things he wanted to do is get us to a place of position so that he could prosper us and multiply. So that he can get us in this place of position as his offspring 
and as followers so that he can get us life and life abundantly because it comes by walking in the spirit. <coughs> Not walking in the flesh. That's where the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Go to Ezekiel 33. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 33. Verse 33. Is everybody okay? Thus the Lord God, on the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will also enable you to dwell in the cities, and the ruins shall be rebuilt. Listen, this is when God is pouring out His Spirit. He's doing it right now even more and more and more. There's revival. Even there's revival in Iran. There's revival in Iraq. There's revival in Saudi Arabia. There's even revival in Palestine. There's revival all over the world. Underground churches. God is pouring out His Spirit in all places. There's revival in this country. That's why you're seeing much wickedness being exposed. What is one of the things of revival? Exposure of evil. And he says this, and I will also enable you to dwell in the cities and the ruins shall be rebuilt. The desolate land shall be tilled instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass by. So they will say, this land that was desolate has become land of the Garden of Eden. And the waste of desolate and ruined cities are now fortified in what? Inhabited. Then the nations which are left all around you shall know that I, the Lord, <clears throat> have rebuilt the ruined places and planted what was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it and it will, will do it. Listen, this is a part of revival. Rebuild. What's going on here? In this country, he is going to rebuild or build a wall. It's going to happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. The wall will come. It will come as a place for protection. Infrastructures in this country and other countries, Iraq is beginning to rebuild. Other places in the world are beginning to rebuild. Even Syria is beginning to rebuild. Because there's great revival in Syria. You won't hear this on the news. There is rebuilding going on. Infrastructure. Farmers are beginning to reset and going to expand. There will be advanced medicine be released. There will be advanced technology re released. Because the Lord, by His Spirit, will download this information with wisdom and abilities and talents to bring glory to his name into individuals. You will see witty inventions even more and more come forth because God will begin to fill his people and choose them and cause them to walk in the spirit. You remember and when they built Solomon's temple, the Lord downloaded wisdom to them. He took men they had no talents. And they became all kinds of architects and so forth because they got downloaded, just like the Matrix. He sent his spirit into them. And the spirit came upon them. And they were actually walking in the spirit and didn't even know it. All of a sudden, whoa, I know how to do this. See, one of the things about walking in the Spirit is not relying on yourself. When you begin to rely and trust in yourself, you're no longer walking in the Spirit. You can't trust you. I can't trust me. I can trust him, but I can't trust me. Does everybody get this? If you're still relying on yourself, you can't walk in the Spirit at all. You'll still be fighting for your life. That's why walking in the Spirit is denying yourself. Amen? Fighting to stay walking in the Spirit. Why? So you can walk with Him hand to hand, heart to heart, and cheek to cheek. You're one with Him. This is a place that you love and you desire. That's called the secret place. Amen? 
Oh, yeah. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Let's speak it. I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, walking in the spirit is not walking in the flesh. It's real simple. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you desire or wish according to the flesh. But if you are led by the spirit... In other words, if you're walking in the spirit, you're not under the law of death, hell, and the grave. Now, the works that are associated with the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and all the like, like drugs and so forth. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So walking in the Spirit is what brings you home. Does everybody get this? But the fruit of the Spirit, which means walking in the Spirit, does everybody see this? Is what? Love. This is not worldly love. This is godly love. This is joy. Uh -huh. This is peace. No matter what you're going through, you have peace. You're always joyful. It doesn't matter what's happening. You have long suffering. In other words, you put up with a lot of garbage. You're able to endure it, burn through it. You don't react. You respond. You are kind. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, control over the old man, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit and not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Again, walking in the Spirit is not walking in the flesh. It's real simple. We bear fruits of Christ. That's exactly what it is. It's you are bearing fruits of Christ. In John 15. I always hear, people say, well, you're in a bad mood. If you're walking in the Spirit, you're not in a bad mood. In fact, you have a good attitude. Amen? People that are not walking in the Spirit are walking in the flesh. It's one or the other. And they're miserable. They walk in fear. They're anxious. They can't see things through. They're more concerned about themselves than anything else. John 15, verse 5. They do a lot of, woe is measy. <clears throat> Let's speak it. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So abiding in him is walking in the Spirit. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. 
if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Of course, the desire will be from him, won't be yours. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my what? Disciples. That's powerful. Abide means connect. In other words, if we're not connected and we're not walking in the Spirit, we're not bearing fruits of righteousness, which is the character of Christ. And in this again, we talk about being connected to His presence, His Word, His truth. The Father is glorified as we bear much fruit, as we express Him. We shall be recognized as His disciples and followers as we're walking in the Spirit. They will know something that you are different. In 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. When you are walking in the Spirit, you're willing to go the extra mile just like Jesus did. He will never give you any more than you can handle. And when it seems to be coming overbearing, you are able to kick in and bust it off. You're not easily swayed by what you hear or what you feel or what you see. You're not moved by that. You're not moved by emotion. You're moved by compassion. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your what? Your mind. You know, you know what gird up the loins of your mind is? Walking in the spirit. Why? Because it's a force field around you. That's why he says, get dressed with the full armor of God. Actually, getting dressed with the full armor of God is getting filled with the spirit and walking in the spirit. Why? Because what is the final seventh part of the armor of God? Praying in tongues. Therefore, go up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Walking in the Spirit maintains the restraints of the flesh. It's always restrained. There's revelation and illumination always waiting for you. You are looking for it. You know it's going to be released somewhere, somehow. God is going to speak to you. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the formal lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct, because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. Listen, you and I cannot be holy. No matter what you do. The only way you can be holy, because it's associated with sanctification, is by walking in the Spirit. And you desire to be obedient to him. You're no longer a man pleaser. You're a God pleaser. Amen. It's obedient and submissive to his call and his purpose in sanctification. You are sold out in the spirit. Oh, glory. Now. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of here where? In fear, reverence, honor, and respect. You cannot walk in that unless you are walking in the Spirit. You know why? Because you are sensitive to the things that you know offend God. That is walking in the Spirit. You are sensitive to it. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Luke 6.
walking in the Spirit. Luke 6.43 How many of y'all want to be a good tree? <laughs> you certainly don't want to be a bad tree. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit. Hello? Nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather... Grace from a bramble bush. I have no idea what that is. But anyway, I've never seen a bramble bush, to be honest with you. <laughs> a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth, what? Speaks. Oh, you'll know somebody just in how they speak. Whether they're walking in the spirit or walking in the flesh. But why do you call me Lord and not do the things I say? Oh, hallelujah. People call him Lord, but they still don't submit. And he says to them, why do you call me Lord when you don't obey me? See, these are the ones that will come and say, Lord, Lord, I did this, I did that, I cast out devils, I did all this. And the Lord says, I don't know you. Why? Because you didn't obey me. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. See, you can say, well, the Word says do this. But did God tell you to do that? There's the difference. I've had many people. I've gone, man, I've gone down to downtown and I'd be at a place and there I've seen people on the streets beating people up with the Bible just about. I was walking somewhere and this woman was out there trying to minister to this person and saying all kinds of stuff, whatever, with the word of God and preaching the word of God. There was no spirit there at all. I finally stepped between her and this dude. And I loved on him. That's how she kept telling you're going to hell. I wanted to take the Bible and stick it in her mouth. <laughs> to chew on this letter. Because she was not led by the spirit of awe at all. And this guy didn't want no Bible from her, man. He was just, well, no, get away from me. And she was just chasing him and chasing him. And then I stopped walking get between them. And I said, man, and I just hugged him. Shooed this girl away. Just talked with him. And he took a Bible from me. I didn't quote no scriptures. Didn't tell me it was going to hell. It wasn't time for that. See, when you're walking in the spirit, you discern time. When it's time to release something and when it's time not to. When it's the time to shut up and it's the time to listen and hear. Time to speak. You will be sensitive to all of these things. You will know what is going to happen. When God tells you to do something, you'll know the result. Is everybody okay? So the mouth exposes the heart. If they're not words of righteousness and edification, amen? I mean, Jesus called dudes hypocrites and I guess morons, you might say. But he was in the spirit. Does everybody get it? He was exposing their garbage. I guess you might say their laundry. In Matthew 12,
fact, he told many of them, he said, you're a father of the devil. <laughs> Why? Because they weren't walking in the spirit. Matthew 12, 36. <clears throat> when you're walking in the spirit, there's always a desire to have things in divine order. There's a desire for that. You don't want to fall out of order because you don't want to. It's not because you have to. When you're walking in the Spirit, there are things that have to do with have to or don't have to. You do them. You destroy all reasoning quickly. It cannot last. It can't last there. It's destroyed. It may come and try and write it on the force field, but you can't read it. <laughs> Verse 36. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words we will be justified, or by your words you will be what? Condemned. Hmm. So we will give account of our words, won't we? That's why you need to repent and put them under the blood. In Philippians 2. You are always quick to repent when you are walking in the Spirit. In fact, you are looking for conviction from God. Philippians chapter 2. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus... Philippians 2, is everybody there? Verse 14. Do all things without what? Complaining. Complaining. And disputing. Why? Put you right in the flesh. Pull you right out of walking in the spirit. That you may become what? Blameless and harmless children of God. Without fault in the midst of crooked and perverse generation. Among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Very powerful. Complaining, disputing, grumbling, all of those things. It's not walking in the Spirit. Now, don't get me wrong. There's areas of discussion of certain things, but it's not about complaining. It's not about grumbling. There are serious discussions about certain things in values and whatever, but it doesn't mean that you're not walking in the Spirit. Amen? James chapter 1. James chapter 1 and verse 26. This explains it. If anyone among you thinks he's religious or holy or spiritual and can't bridle his tongue, he is totally deceived. And he deceives his own heart. And his relationship is really useless. Does everybody understand that? Because a person that lives that way really doesn't have a relationship. And there's no way they can walk in the Spirit. Because they're always quenching the Spirit. They're always grieving the Spirit. It's not your decisions that always grieve the Spirit. It's what we say that grieves the Spirit. Amen? 
Oh, hallelujah. Grumblers and complainers who cannot bridle their tongue. Romans 14. Romans 14. Walking in the Spirit is an area where you are in complete trust to God. You are dependent on Him, not independent on yourself. You are dependent on Him. You're no longer leaning on your own understanding. You realize that you don't have to figure everything out. You have to trust everything out. And by trusting, understanding will come. You may not know what to do, but you will. Just stay in the Spirit. Keep walking in the Spirit. Romans 14, verse 16. Is everybody there? Therefore do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. But righteousness and peace and joy where? In the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is accepted to God and approved by man. Therefore let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Wow. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go back to Philippians 2 and verse 12. Walking in the Spirit. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always what? Obeyed. Not as in my presence also, but now much more in my absence. Do what? Work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Wow. Work out your own salvation. Walking in the Spirit is working out your salvation. There's an area where there's reverence and honor and respect to God. And there's an area where you tremble at his word. Because his word is true. There's not a compromise of his word. Work out your salvation with the fear and trembling. That means reverence, honor, and respect and trembling at his word. Psalm 16. Psalm 16, verse 7 and 8. You run to the throne before you run to the phone. In fact, if you're actually walking in the Spirit, you're dancing everywhere, man. You're just joyful. You're just waiting on God. There's a communion there. You're getting your answers, whatever you need. Everything's there. I will bless the Lord who has given me what? Counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Walking in the Spirit always sets the Lord before us. 
No matter where you go, no matter what you do, whatever decision you're making, the Lord is there. And you're waiting for his opinion. Because sometimes he'll release an opinion to you and allow you to make the choice. Does everybody understand that? He'll say something like, well, what do you think? Or he'll tell you something or... He'll give you the opportunity to make the choice. Why? Because he wants to see if you would make the choice he would. <laughs> Walking in the spirit usually makes the choice he would. Amen? They, we set the Lord before us so we are not moved. And failure is not a choice. There is no failure walking in the Spirit. And 2 Corinthians 4. Did Jesus have any failures? No. Second Corinthians four verse sixteen. Have you ever been disappointed, discouraged, gotten to a point of weariness? Yeah. That's when you lift your hands to heaven and get another drink. That's when you make a confession. You know that you must sow your way out when the enemy starts coming. You know that there's got to be a song of deliverance. Because he's beginning to try to break down that force field. He tries to break it down so he can begin to penetrate. And the only way to keep it up is to get reconnected again. Thank you, Lord, I trust you. Thank you, you start confessing. You start, Lord, fill me. You start the song of deliverance. And that force field comes back strong again. Either that or you, that force field becomes weaker, 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 and now your eyes are on you and not him. He's not before you. You are. Is everybody okay? In verse 16, Therefore do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. And you know this. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You know that no matter what's going on, you're going through it. Well, we don't look at the things which are seen, hello, but the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? They are eternal. In other words, we see the unseen. Does everybody get it? We're not looking at what we don't have. We are grateful for what we have. Does everybody get that? You know, so many people focus on what they don't have. That's in the flesh. When you focus on not only what you have, but the promises of God, now you're walking in the Spirit. Because And no matter what you're going through, you know, how oh, things are going to work to the good. It doesn't matter. Philippians 3. And then one more scripture. Verse 12, not that I have already attained or I am already perfected, but I do what? I do what? I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind me, reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Listen, walking in the Spirit is not living from the past. That has no touch. Do, 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 do. It has no touch. Amen? You are no longer living from the past. You are living from the future to the present. The past has no effect on you. And the enemy might try to, you know, and again, 
He's going to try and slide right on that force field. Do you remember? But it's actually erasable. It just melts. <laughs> you try to read it. What? 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 And it goes down. <laughs> just falls. Around. Everything falls. That's what the word says. That they will fall at your side. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high. Amen? They'll fall at your side. Those words will fall at the, They can throw anything. It can't touch you. It's just going to... Because that force field is there. Because you're walking in the spirit. Remember, walking in the spirit is supernatural. It's not natural. Hmm? Hallelujah. So we press on. We, we, verse 14. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree of how you're filled... That we have already attained, let us walk in the same rule and let us be of the same mind. Forgetting the past and pressing on, setting your mind on the things above. Don't fall in the area of jealousy or, or that area of competition what somebody else has more than you. It doesn't matter. Don't fall in that place of envy. It won't affect you if you're truly walking in the Spirit. Amen? You know that God has got something to release to you. And as you're walking in the Spirit, you're not anxious for anything. You just want everything right away. <laughs> Psalm 15. Psalm 15. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill? When you're walking in the Spirit, you love his presence. You want more of his presence. You are lovers of his presence. You become a worshiper because you know you're going to get reconnected and that force field is going to come back on again. See, now when that force field is there, you're in the tabernacle. You're in a secret place. You're walking in the spirit. You're living in the Spirit. And now look what happens. He who walks uprightly, you will walk uprightly. You will work the works of righteousness. You will speak truth in your heart. You, you won't backbite. You're, you'll have control over your tongue. Nor does evil to his neighbor. Nor takes up a reproach against his friend. In whose eyes a vile person is what? In other words, he doesn't associate with individuals that will contaminate. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He, he, he encourages. He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. Whoa. This is a person that puts others first. He puts the kingdom first. No matter what, he ain't going to change. He's not going to be a man pleaser. He's going to be a God pleaser no matter what's going on. Nobody can bribe or anything. It's not about how much money. Verse 5. He who does not put out his money at usury, in other words, he doesn't try to manipulate, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. All of these is about walking in the Spirit. He said, he who does these things will never be moved. Listen, if you're walking in the Spirit, you will not be moved. You will be on a solid rock. Amen? But there is a process to get there. Deny yourself. Fight and follow. That is the process. Again, we are to be sensitive to these things. 
Amen? There should be a desire. There should be a thirst and hunger for righteousness. There should be a desire to seek the kingdom of God. There should be a desire to be a God pleaser. All of these areas are walking in the spirit and not being moved. Trusting all the way. And waiting for the next command. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word. We ask that this word be protected by the anointing. Oh, yes. Because walking in the Spirit is walking in the anointing. And Lord, you said that your Spirit would guide us to all truth. So Lord, as we walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit, we know that truth will be released. Illumination and revelation will be released. And we will see the things that you desire us to see. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let revelation and illumination be released to each and every one here tonight that they may see according to the way you see and walk according to the way you walk in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.